All right, welcome back to the show. Today we are talking about refs. Are refs getting worse? There certainly has been a lot of public criticism of the refs these days. Before this season, you may never heard the name Ben Taylor. You may never heard of Scott Foster. You never heard of Tony Brothers, but now you definitely do. Let's start with Fred Van Vliet during a post-game interview calling out Ben Taylor, an official that's been in the league for 10 years. Van Vliet got a technical foul for dissent. He was chirping at Ben Taylor toward the end of the game. You know, most of the refs are trying hard. I like a lot of the refs are trying hard. They're pretty fair. They communicate well. And then you got the other ones who just want to be dicks and um, it just kind of fucks the game up. Nobody's coming to see that shit. They come to see the players. And um, I think we're losing a little bit of the fabric of what the NBA is and was. And um, it's been disappointing this season. Um, you can look up most of my texts this year have been with Ben Taylor officiating. So at a certain point as a player, you feel it's personal. But earlier this season, Fred got a technical from Ben Taylor for doing this pretty innocuous gesture. OG gets back. But a foul on it. I believe it's going to be on Fred Van Vliet. Ben Taylor has given Fred Van Vliet five technical fouls this season, and for nothing particularly egregious. And here's another technical foul Fred Van Vliet received, not from Ben Taylor, but for just clapping his hands. But what would cause him to curse on regional TV and call out a referee by name? He got a $30,000 fine for this. You can't publicly criticize refs in the NBA. Well, they were fresh off a loss to the Denver Nuggets, where Scotty Barnes received a technical foul from Scott Foster, another name that you've probably heard before, for saying, y'all cheating, bro. This technical foul resulted resulted in a free throw that ultimately cost the Raptors the game. So Fred was already triggered by the refs. I do believe that refs have personal beefs with players. I think the refs have each other's backs. So if there's a particular player that is getting under the skin of a particular ref, those other refs are going to be less inclined to give calls to that player's team. Like in the case with Rasheed Wallace and all of the referees. Rasheed clocked 317 technical fouls in his career and 29 ejections. And Sheed is still not over his beef with the refs. And in the case with Chris Paul and official Scott Foster. Chris Paul has lost 12 playoff games that Scott Foster has officiated. And Chris Paul even admits he believes there's beef between him and Scott Foster. You know, I got a tech tonight. I'm over there with Courtney saying, that's Scott. That's Scott. And I get a tech. You know what I mean? That's history there. So Scott, you know, he's a man. That's who they pay to see. Chris Paul shares the same sentiment that Fred Van Vliet does. He sarcastically mentions that people are there to watch the official Scott Foster perform. They're obviously not. I don't think the referees want to be the stars of the league, but I think accusing them of being fame whores is another way of getting under their skin. But Van Vliet's expensive public criticism actually was effective because it seems that 10-year veteran official Ben Taylor has been demoted to the number two position on the court since the Fred Van Vliet interview. We don't know if this is necessarily true because the NBA does not publicize their discipline for referees. Very smart idea. Don't give people too much power. So are referees becoming increasingly prone to error? No. Referees have been scrutinized ever since sports began, ever since someone made a rule and put someone in charge of making sure everyone followed that rule. No one likes to be punished, no one likes to be criticized, and no one likes to be told what to do. Let's take the game the other night against the Dallas Mavericks and the Golden State Warriors, where a timeout is called immediately after an out-of-bounds call, and the Mavericks believe it's their ball when it's really the Golden State Warriors' ball. Cuban goes over to the scores table and chews out everyone and later tweets this. Worst officiating non-call mistake possibly in the history of the NBA. Well, certainly Mark Cuban doesn't use this language all the time and he saves it for particularly egregious situations and isn't being hyperbolic at all. Wrong, Mark Cuban said this about the referees 10 years ago. I haven't said a whole lot about the officiating in a long, long time, but I haven't seen it this bad in a long, long time. Guys miss calls, that's part of the game. You're not always going to have a great crew. Officials have got to learn that's part of the game, but these were officials that have been part of the league for years and it was just off the charts bad. And if no one ever says anything, nothing ever happens. Well, everyone says everything all the time. Shitting on referees is as much of a part of professional sports as overpriced hot dogs and beer. Ref drama is nothing new. Back in 2007, official Joey Crawford yelled at Tim Duncan, do you want to fight me? And then gave Tim Duncan a technical foul for laughing at him. Free throw and a technical foul call. I think it's on Tim Duncan sitting on the bench. Somebody on the bench for the Spurs. Yep, it's Duncan, who was unhappy with the lack of the call or the call earlier. 
And he said something to Joe Crawford. I could not come up with a more composed, level-headed player than Tim Duncan. And even he was not safe from a hot-headed referee with a bone to pick. The fact of the matter is, these refs not only have to make the calls, but they have to keep the game orderly. They need to be able to control a situation involving some very physically imposing men. So I don't necessarily blame the referees for being quick on the draw with a technical foul. The truth is, it's damn near impossible for a referee to make calls based on a conscious bias. Because they will lose their job, the NBA has an incredibly thorough system for checking the officiating of every game. If you ever thought, these refs should have refs, they do have refs. They have reviewers of every single game. The NBA has a web platform called the Referee Performance Engagement System. This is a database with video footage of every single call that's happened in the G League, WNBA, and NBA. Every ref is graded on every single call. And your grade does not only decide whether you're going to officiate the playoffs, but decides if you're going to be demoted or upgraded to the WNBA, G League, or NBA. They do this not only to check the refs, but to ensure there is consistency amongst the different leagues. To say an official is making calls because he's incentivized for your team to lose is a disrespect to the 2002 Sacramento Kings. A game six that has been proven to be influenced by official Tim Donaghy, who had money on the game. And even in a game that is definitively corrupt, the game still had to be close enough to not raise a flag red enough for the NBA to do an immediate investigation. Bad calls are par for the course. And if you find the injustice too upsetting, maybe professional sports spectating is not for you. I'm just kidding. Watch sports, get mad at refs. I don't really care. My point being, even doing this video, I kind of stopped, I stopped wanting to do it in the middle just because I thought there's not enough here. Refs don't affect the game. They're actually really good at their job. The fact that we don't hear about them more is a testament to the fact that they're really doing well. They're kind of out there and we don't think about them very much, which is the idea of a referee is to not even be thought about. Thanks for being here. Eat your corn dog. Love your mom.